Hi everyone, I'm Raphael from Marseille and today I'm going to present a project centered on spinal cord functional MRI. The goal of this project is to map sensory or more precisely proprioceptive afferences coming from arm muscles into the cervical spinal cord. This work is done in collaboration with Marseille's MRI INT Center. So compared to brain functional MRI, spinal functional MRI has barely been explored. For instance, in 2022, only 33 articles were published on this subject. So this is mainly due to strong technological limits that we're now familiar with. So the spinal cord is quite small and quite noisy to say the least, which makes signal acquisition complicated. And um, to this day, spinal fMRI studies have mainly looked at motor activity. So for instance, here you can see this recent study by Kinani and colleagues um, on the specific location of motor activities depending on body segments being moved here, the wrists and the fingers. And on the sensory side, what has mainly been looked at have, has been um, pain and temperature but much less is known about muscle proprioception. So what is muscle proprioception? It's a sensory modality that lets us perceive position and movement of our own bodies in space. And this is possible thanks to mechanoreceptors that are located inside our muscles and sensitive to muscle stretch. So our team in Marseille is able to specifically stimulate these sensors through mechanical vibration. So vibrating the tendon at the base of the muscle recruits the proprioceptive afferents 1A that uh, are known to enter ipsilaterally inside the spinal cord. So among these fibers, some will connect directly with the motor neurons of the homonymous muscle and others will travel along the cord up to the brain where the integrated information will lead to perception of movement illusion even though the participant is standing still. So through vibration, we're able to target specifically the spinal proprio-motor circuits linked to sensory proprioceptive afferences without people moving. We hence use this technology to investigate specifically the proprioceptive circuits linked to arm muscle in the spinal cord. So we recruited 20 young participants that underwent two fMRI acquisition sessions. In the first session, we stimulated the ventral side of both arms at three different levels, uh, wrists, elbows, and shoulders. And during the second session, only the left arm was, was equipped with three pairs of vibrators placed on both ventral and dorsal sides to stimulate agonist antagonist musculature. We used an event-related protocol split in four runs during which all sites were stimulated for for eight seconds at a time in a random order and there was also a condition in which no vibration was applied. So in total each site was stimulated 32 times. Um, the biggest challenge here was finding the optimal acquisition and pre-processing uh, sequences. We acquired two types of structural images, a T2 space that was well resolved in all three planes and a T2 star medic, which was very well resolved in the axial plane. We can see the butterfly there. And on the functional side, we narrowed our search for the optimal sequence thanks to these prerequisites. We wanted a one millimeter in-plane resolution, a repetition time of 2.5 seconds max, and an echo time between 30 and 40 milliseconds. We ran several pilots on two sequences fitting these criteria. And in the end, we chose a zoom it sequence that focalizes excitation on our small area of interest with a two second TR and a 30 millisecond TE and synchronized physiological acquisition. So once the data was acquired with this zoom it sequence, we pre-process the data. The idea here is to correct for movement within one run and between four runs, and then to mask the spinal cord area from these realigned runs in order to co-register them to the anatomical and also to the template space. So to avoid multiple interpolations, we extract warping fields for each of these steps and um, concatenate them and apply them all at once, thus going from the raw images to the co-registered images in one go. We also extracted noise regressors using different tools. So we detected outliers thanks to the spinal cord toolbox. And we also did a principal component analysis um, on a selective cerebrospinal fluid mask to extract non-neural noise. Finally, we used retroechore analysis to take cardiological and respiratory rhythms into account. And uh, once we identified these non-neurological sources of noise, 
Once we identified these non-neurological sources of noise, we smoothed the data with an anisotropic kernel of 1.5 by 1.5 by 6 millimeters, which we limited to the spinal cord area here, thanks to AFNI's blur and mask function. And with the smooth data in hand, we could move on to statistical analysis. We ran a general linear model on each run for each participant with the previously explained nuisance regressors and six vibration regressors and one no vibration regressor of interest. We then grouped the obtained contrast for each subject run with a fixed effect analysis before using these subject level outputs as input for group level analysis. This second um, analysis is a mixed effect, meaning we take into account the residual variance from subject level and and here are the results obtained from these analysis. So here are shown activations in the spinal cord when we contrast vibration of one arm uh, to the same vibration on the opposite arm. The coronal views show max intensity projection and the actual view is a selected slice from the most relevant activation. So for the anterior deltoid, contrasting vibration of the right anterior deltoid versus the left anterior deltoid leads to a unique activation in the C4 spinal level. Um, on the left side, there are multiple activations with a peak in the C5 spinal level. For the two more distal, we, the location of activations differed with activations mainly found at C6, C7 for biceps and C8 for the wrists. We see that the further the limb from our torso, the lower the projection in the spinal cord. This is what we call a rostrocaudal organization of arm projection uh, for proprioception based on the proximodistal muscle location. In addition, as you can see, the activations are mainly distributed on the ipsi lateral side. So here more on the right and here more on the left. Interestingly, we retrieved this rostrocaudal organization in the second session as well. So here we contrast each stimulation condition with the no vibration condition. And we see that deltoids and biceps and triceps are located higher in the spinal cord than the wrists, which are located at the last cervical level, C7 and C8. Um, and since we had the opportunity of scanning the same participants twice with partly the same stimulations, we could actually look at the reproducibility of our present results. So here is the activation pattern found during the first left arm versus right arm session for the wrist flexor versus no vibration contrast. And during the second session, we find a very similar pattern. And this is also the case for the anterior deltoid uh, muscle group. So globally, these observations are consistent across two sessions and show that spinal cord fMRI is a promising tool to explore appropriate spinal circuits in healthy subjects. However, the, these patterns also raise the remaining question as to why several spinal levels were activated for each muscle group and not only the level of projection that we were expecting. So this could be due to intraspinal connections between different levels playing a role in sensory motor coordination or to multiple insertion of 1A afferents via several rootlets through different levels. So in addition, we chose to have a closer look at these patterns by mapping each subject's activations peak. For instance, here we show two main peaks for a subject for the left wrist flexor versus no vibration contrast. And when we put all subjects activation peaks with a shape and color code, we get this figure. What we see is that although activations are quite spread out, the region with the most subject peaks was the C7, C8 region here with 80%, um, as found previously in the left versus right and right versus left risk contrast figure at group level. And we find the same clear distinction when mapping subject level activation peaks for the second session. So besides these quite replicable patterns, we see that subject level analysis reveals a quite substantial um, intersubject variability.
To sum up, the noteworthy finding of the present study is that at group level, we found a rostrocaudal organization of proprioceptive afferent projections with the deltoids on the highest cervical level, the biceps and triceps at the intermediate ones, and the wrists on C7, C8, the lowest levels. And this data can be compared to those reported by Shermer in 2011 on motor innervation. So they electrophysiologically stimulated motor efferents of the cervical spinal cord selectively during spinal cord surgery in 129 patients. And they also find this rostrocaudal organization with substantial intersubject and interstimulation variability. So these results on muscle innervation mirror our present findings on proprioceptive projections. And this strong variability between people and these overlaps between muscle afferences and afferences, they can be an issue in clinical contexts, for instance, when implanting electrodes in spinal cord injury patients. So the final goal would be to be able to characterize individual maps of sensory and motor circuits using spinal cord fMRI. Thank you to all my colleagues and collaborators and thank you for your attention.